Perfect. I've known Statman for 25, 26 years, and you're the only guy that made Statman cry. Oh, after yes. You won that, yeah. After you won the 500, <laughs> Broham. <laughs> I know. That was pretty cool, though, huh? Yes. Hey, anybody that will bounce stat. off the wall to go after a win can't be all bad. No. <laughs> Not going to give up that opportunity. You do a little opening, I'm going for it. You know, kicking off this interview with Buddy Rice, of course, Indy 500 winner, Crasher had to remind us. Crasher, go ahead and take it over. How many years ago was it uh, that uh, our buddy, Buddy Rice, won the Indy 500? What well, anniversary are we coming up on? Well, it's we're three years away from his 20-year anniversary of that Indy win. But before you crack these mics, Kenny, we also just realized Buddy is three years away from his daughter driving before she turns 16. <laughs> so the year 2024 is going to be huge for you. There's going to be a lot going on. <laughs> That's just crazy, though. Where does the time go? Before you had kids, like everything went slow. You didn't really realize it. And then they, it's these anniversaries and things start popping up and birthdays. And you're like, oh, man, then you realize you're getting old. Does it seem like 17 years ago that you won the Indy 500? Uh, sometimes it does, but sometimes no. You know, it just kind of depends. You say it sometimes does, buddy, and you know how racers, well, no, ra ra maybe f more fans than, I don't know, racers and fans, we get so damn nostalgic about dates and wins, and 50 years ago this happened, Al Hunter did, Mario did. Uh, you're you're going to become part of that old dude conversation. Do you remember when Buddy Rice won old. the Indy 500? <laughs> Well, just think about it. If, I, if that makes me old, then what does that make you? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the gate. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. When you look wow. at what you did with the 500, and this isn't a big Indy 500 uh, interview, but, uh, again, it's significant in your life. But you look at your, your win in the Indy 500, you talk about doors being opened. You talk about name recognition. Given your and we'll get to this. Given your travels and the things and teams that you're involved in now, if you if you never won the Indy 500, do you think we'd be sitting here talking to to Buddy Rice about you know dealing with sports car teams or feeder series into IndyCar? I have no idea. I'm not one to reflect on like looking back on what ifs and stuff. I mean, you know, people ask me all the time because of my stuff with baseball and things that have you know, what if I would have done things differently? Like you can't. You can't control that. What's happens? What's happened? So I try to live in the now and what's going to happen in the future. Um, I mean, I guess being realistic, no, probably not. Obviously, that puts you on a whole nother level. Um, obviously, I did other things after that that also helped elevate me even more. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It just kind of is what it is. I worked really hard at it, and it's. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have what happened at at Indy with, you know, Bobby Rahal and David Letterman and all our sponsors and everybody that was behind it. So I think it was, uh, you know, it's just something that. I just really happy to be a part of it. I was glad we were able to do what we, we did. And, you know, here I am. I get to talk to you guys. and I got to meet a bunch of cool people and go do cool stuff all the time. Yeah, but hold on a second. I think what you just brought up when you referenced baseball and how you have approached things in your life, sure, a big sports win such as the Indy 500 is awesome for your resume and for people to constantly re re reference you as an Indy 500 winner, but you have been a guy, at least as long as we've known you, to always take advantage of even the smaller opportunities, whether it was baseball, whether it was motorsports. I mean, how did you get involved with Eddie Cheever in the first place? How did that vault into an opportunity with Bobby Rahal? It was still your hard work that got you there, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and a lot of it was opportunity. A lot of, you know, I had, I mean, there was issues at Cheever's when I showed up there. Obviously, I got into the, into the car at Rahal because of what happened with Kenny and you know, Kenny and I were friends before that. I've been with Ray Hall and, and, and done testing with them and driver development stuff with those guys. But, you know, yeah, you always had to take every opportunity you can get. And especially when, you know, big opportunities like that to where you can elevate yourself and give yourself an opportunity to succeed, you got to take those. And you got to take them any way they come. And, it's, you know, sometimes it came at, at, the, at an issue or at a bad spot for somebody else. But, I mean, that happens in, in everything across the board, whether it's business or sports. So it's just uh, – yeah, I just capitalized on what I had and, and tried to make the most of everything I and every opportunity I get. Buddy Rice, it's come to mind that the move you made to win the Indy 500 was against the wall. It was inches between <laughs> you and the wall and the car on the other side, on your right side. With it, You didn't make that move. You may not be the champion. 
would you make that move now? Was that a move made from youth, or uh, would old age tell you that's stupid, buddy? Uh, I don't know about that. I think definitely as you get older, you think and look at things differently. So I think from that perspective, I mean, yeah, I mean, if I was in the same spot, would I think about it differently? Probably. But at that time, I mean, I knew that was an opportunity. That was on one of the restarts. We were just coming back and we needed to get back to the front. We had a game plan and we needed to stick to the game plan. And that's what we did. So, um, at 45, would I do the same thing I did back then? I have no idea until I'm in that position, but I like to think that I'm still on the aggressive side, so I'd like to think I'd still go for it. Yeah, I do too. Anybody that wear a hat like that when you're 20 or 45 <laughs> is going to dive against the wall and go for the win. <laughs> Buddy, what was it that convinced you and your father to go the route of racing? Because you were being looked at by colleges for baseball. You were very good at baseball. Why did you... What was the conversation you guys had? Why was it that you went into racing, not baseball? I felt at the time, which I didn't know everything, and I, we probably should have done a little more research, but you know, I wasn't getting some of the opportunities that we thought we should be getting. There was some stuff going on politically and different things. So we jumped into the go-karts and started doing that. I thought it was more like an individual thing. And if I was able just to go out and perform and do stuff, it would you know, translate into me getting opportunities. And that's really where it came from. And my dad, from the racing and having a racing background, I mean, that's I'd grown up around cars and motors and all that stuff. So it was kind of a, just a, a natural fit and things just kind of evolved. Did we have any idea that was going to evolve to what it did? No. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it gave me a lot of opportunity. I got a, I got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, I, like I said, I just got a lot of opportunities. I got to go try a lot of things and, and it, it doors opened up and it was luckily the, the correct move at the time. Well, you've traveled where this summer? I'd say it was the correct move at the time and now. Yeah, I mean, I've been to, what, Sweden, Norway, uh, Denmark, Finland, and then back to Sweden. And that was just <laughs> through the summer for racing. And now we're getting ready for Nitro Circus. And we got, you know, Utah, Minnesota, Arizona, California, Glen Helen, and down into Florida. And then we'll have a little break and we'll fire Nitro Circus 2022 back up. But we're really looking forward to it with Dry and Rainbow Racing. We got four lights cars we got four supercars coming with audi and you know it's uh, it's gonna be exciting i'm looking forward to it. i'm looking forward to travis's deal it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh it's exciting buddy rice joining us here in the freak nation and and buddy i'm a little disappointed because you're out there we're both out there when it comes to conversations that we'll have off mic and like to mix it up and you bring up all these things that you're part of why in the hell won't you get involved in freaking social media to share some of this <laughs> buddy rice madness bro ham <laughs> I'm just not into it. I never have been. People talk to me about it. I just don't, I don't get into it that much. I mean, I look at some stuff, but I don't know. I don't think I need to take pictures of my, my food and what I'm doing and where I'm at and all that stuff. I'm just not into all that. I never have been. I just do my own thing. You know, that's so true though, because I remember Ricky Carmichael was very hesitant about Twitter and he, he wouldn't even get a, a, a website because he's like, okay, if I'm going to do social media, that's going to be my website. But you're right. If, if you got a TV gig, anywhere down the road, let's say in the next five years, and they force you to get social media, would you quit the TV gig because you're just not going there? I don't know. I guess I'd have to cross that bridge when we do. I mean, we've right <laughs> now, we've, there's been a couple of pilots regarding some stuff with some documentaries and some uh, other TV shows. So there's, you know, there's stuff on the horizon that could possibly happen. If they require that, then we'll have to, I guess, address that. Some pilots. Maybe I just have someone do it for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say your daughter. You could have Michelle do it. Your pilots, hold on. What are you talking about? Go deeper into that. Are we going to see a Buddy Rice documentary? Are we going to see you doing something with Nitro Circus on TV? Yeah, I want to know. Well, we'll see. No, I'm not nothing with Nitro Circus right now. There's some other things that we've been working on. Um, we had some stuff that we thought would be in place for some other stuff. And as it starts to get a little closer, if it looks like it's going to happen, I'll make sure I come out and explain a little bit more, but there's definitely, <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things happening and, uh, uh, you know, there could be some exciting stuff coming down, but you know, how it is talks cheap and it's just got to happen actually. Wow. So we'll see. <laughs> Buddy Rice, you stuck with rally cross. You talked about nitro circus. You stuck with rally cross where a lot of people bailed and went somewhere else. What do you see in that that keeps you around? Well, one of the big things is, you know, Dennis Reinbold's really behind it and the whole team. That's one of the big things right now. The reason I'm into the rally crossing is I like it because it puts the discipline back in the driver. There's so many different elements to what's going on between the pavement, the dirt, the jumps, the different uh, features and everything. So you have to drive. You have to be on top of it. You have to be on your game to win and to be up front. And I think it's great. It puts it back in the driver's hands. 
some of the other stuff's a little bit of um you know it's a cubic dollar race so i think that you know some of the really good kids if you don't get a good opportunity on the right stuff you're gonna you know struggle a little bit more um and just so i've been into it i like it i like where it's at i like where it's going um they're gonna go we got electric cars coming in 2022 that's gonna mm. be exciting dennis has got that going as well for us so i mean uh I don't know. It's going to be cool. I'm really into it. I like it. I like the atmosphere. Tons of people come out and it's uh, it's exciting. There's a lot of energy at these events. How do we get more eyeballs on those events? Because anytime I've watched one, it, it has been incredibly exciting. And like you said, it's pure driving. The driver has to really use his own mind to figure these things out on all these different surfaces. So how do we get more eyeballs on this type of racing? Because essentially it's what everybody wants is the pure enjoyment of difficulty and talent. Well, I think with right now, tra with Travis and what their approach is going to be, it sounds like doing all the filming in house and they're using some other uh, companies to, to broadcast it out. They're going to have streaming, they're going to have all the stuff. They're going to be able to do the reach. So if you just get on Nitro Circus Rally Cross, start looking that up and it'll, it'll explain all that to you. But I mean, they have a very good business plan. They have a long term program right now. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot of growth. And I think you're going to see a lot of exciting people. And I think this is going to be a new sport that's going to, you know, it's going to get back up there in the upper level like it was, you know, back in the GRC days. But it, I think cool. with the yeah. organization and the group and, and Travis behind it, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be even better. Would there be anything that would get you behind the wheel or are you just the coach owner? Uh, you're not a driver anymore. Uh, I do drive. It depends. Not with the rally cross stuff right now. I'm just with the management side of the stuff. I'm not an owner. Um there is some stuff I could be driving later this year. There's some, there's some tests being lined up. And Come on, don't talks. leave that on the table like that. I will see. <laughs> Damn, Just buddy. Here, there's on. stuff going on. I got to see. I don't like to let it out too much because if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't yeah. happen. But uh, there's a lot going on. There's there, You could see me back behind the wheel. Um, that. And, I'm, and my big thing is. <laughs> Wait, I'm interrupting you, dude. <laughs> that is what social media is about. Yeah. That that last couple of sentences right there yeah. is what's going to get you tens of thousands of people saying, I got it. And then the advertisers come once you get the tens of thousands of people. And that means money. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll think about it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Now you're thinking about it. You mentioned you the money. Think, and you now did. you're thinking about it. Well, you got to be able to, well, you got to be able to think, you got to be able to evolve. You got to, you know, you got to be able to change, but we'll see. I don't know. But like I said, there's some stuff coming. We'll see what happens later in the year. See if we can't get something to, uh, to come together. There's a lot, there's a lot of options. There's, there's a lot of things going on right now. Buddy Rice here in the Freak Nation, Lucas Oil Studios. And Buddy, the news came out. Well, the news has been out for about three weeks now, but it looks like uh, Michael Andretti and company are going to be forking over a whole lot of scoots to buy a Formula One team. And everybody's putting Colton Herta automatically in that seat. Where does Buddy Rice sit on this with a team, with, with Andretti in general, going to the elite open wheel series in the, in the world and competing? Are we ready to do something like that? Well, I mean, if you've been looking at what he's been doing lately in his expansion and they've, you know, they've had success everywhere they've went. So, you know, it's just another step. If they put Colton in there, I think it'd be a very good move. The kid's great. He's uh, he's going to be awesome if he were to go over there. Um, we'll just have to see. I mean, it's been a long time since, you know, an American's had a legitimate shot at getting in there and having a seat in Formula One. Um, it's a big uphill battle. So this could actually open up more opportunities and open the doors. But I think... Colton would be a great candidate. I mean, everything he's been able to do in IndyCar, how he's come up and how competitive he is week in, week out, I think it'd be it'd be awesome to see. Have you ever driven a Formula One car off the grid? So have you ever hopped in one? No, that's one of the few things I have not driven. Right. Where do you think where do you think the drop off is? I mean, I'm a I'm a big soccer player. I know where the drop off is between major league soccer and top level European soccer. I know where the problems are and the issues are. Where are the problems and the issues outside of financial from the jump from IndyCar to Formula One? Or is it all financial? But when you come from when you have Formula One drivers versus IndyCar drivers, I think some of it is probably financial. Some of it is probably political. Some of it's just, uh, you know, we're over here and, and you have to go over there to, 
to try to make it happen. I know, I know Rossi and some of those other guys have tried it. They, they put their time in. They did what they needed to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just a lack of timing, right? The seats are full. The way the contracts come up and, and those opportunities, sometimes that's some of it. It's probably just a lot of everything that causes these problems. And eventually it'd be nice to see one of the Americans get over there and, and be able to make it, uh, and make it happen. I just, it, it's funny to watch where, again, you have Haas over there and it, you have this American owner who brings in a foreign driver, a foreign to Americans, and it basically craps the bed. And now we have Andretti, who himself ran in Formula One, and we're just, we just want some representation in a series. Same way we do with, with, with the U.S. men's team. We want, want to be able to compete with the world, but we continue to sit over here, either be a back marker suck hind boob regardless of how you whatever metaphor you want to drop in there it's just there are issues there but i think we're closer now than we were 20 or 30 years ago getting those opportunities it's few and far between i mean look at this is some of the biggest driver movement we've had in quite some time over there with the formula one stuff so true um you know and it's expensive to run those things i mean that's also a problem and and, you know getting on the grid doing all that stuff there's only 20 seats available so um I don't know. It's hard to say exactly what it is. I'm not in the middle of all that, you know, not mm-hmm. behind the scenes knowing everything that's going on, but there's definitely, I mean, there's just a little bit of everything. Well, we talk, we're talking right now about the Andretti team and how they are in so many facets of motorsports. But I mean, let's go back to who you are with the Dreyer and Reinbold team. A lot of people don't give that team enough credit. I mean, how many different disciplines are you guys in right now, whether it's rallycross, like you said, cars in the month of May, there's, that's not an easy feat to cross over in so many different disciplines yet here you are helping to manage all of that and make it work. Yeah. I mean, we've been, we've been bouncing back and forth between the Indy car and the rally cross program for the last, like, like I said, five, six years now, um, you know, between Dennis Reinbold, Chase Selman, Brett DeBoer, all those guys, like, and all, and all the boys at the shop, they do a really good job of managing it, laying out the schedules, how we have to do everything and, and making it all happen. I mean, it's not easy. You know, this past year we had a really good run at the speedway with Sage got up to sixth. I mean, that was awesome for us, you know, coming from the back. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work, and we're one of the only independent teams in the in the IndyCar at the at the 500 level right now. You know, we show up just for that. Every once in a while we run a one-off, but it's a, it's a lot of work. We do a really good job, and we're pretty disciplined, but, you know, we're always striving to get better and do more, so we're always looking at different opportunities. Speaking of opportunities, you have a 13-year-old daughter. I've got a 7-year-old daughter going on 13, it seems. Uh, <laughs> bigger challenge raising that 13 year old than any day in IndyCar? I don't know. Probably. Sometimes it's got its ups and downs, you know, they know everything right now. She wants to oh, yeah. do her own thing. So you just got to let it kind of, you got to kind of let it ride. So it's, it's a little different. Are you just the dad in the background watching your wife and daughter headbutt each other? Basically? No, I'm involved. We got a lot going on. She's got a, we got volleyball starting up right now for school. Ooh. So that's been good. She's been doing that. Um, so we'll just see. But I just gotta, you gotta kind of, just gotta get a roll with it sometimes. Oh yeah, I just the reason I asked that is that our seven year old. Oh yeah, I'm already going like this with her, and Kenny just kind of <laughs> sits back and watches it's awesome. it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but, but come on, happened. buddy, it's listen. Part of it. Oh yeah, you're trying to be all happy boy macho in this, brother. She's a 13 year old girl, and it's just the the bomb watching these women grow and how they they navigate this world and. You're talking about volleyball, and I'm sure there's numerous other things that she's involved in. It's you—you you can't explain winning the Indy 500. You can't explain the sound of a funny car, and you certainly can't explain to people what it's like not just to raise a child, but to raise a daughter uh, as a father to this daughter. Am, am I wrong or am I right, buddy? No, you're right, but there's a lot of other people doing the exact same thing. So you know, we're not. It's this about you, though, buddy. If this is about you, <laughs> damn it, I don't nah, care about it's all uh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna back me in that corner right <laughs> has yeah. has she no, shown awesome, any it- honestly it's she has been great to have her what she does and how she's been growing how it changes and and watch her just evolve it's been uh, yeah. it's been great she's been a really good kid and uh really proud of it you know we we work really hard at it and you constantly you learn something new every day so it mm. just uh it just keeps growing and you just kind of keep rolling with it and uh you know gotta take your lumps when they come are you just dad or does she know that you were one of the biggest names in racing at one time? Or are you just the guy with the funny hat over in the corner? That's Oops. dad. <laughs> uh, it's probably a little bit of both. <laughs> she knows she's been there. 
I mean, there's people that brought it up to her. I mean, it's kind of hard to you know, hide from it. It didn't, you know, it's mm-hmm. out there. So I think you just have to go with it. it I think there are some learning curves with that, but you know, you start to, to understand it. She's been at the speedway. We were there for the hundredth. She got screws around the track and one of the pace cars and stuff like that. And she's been around for a lot of different stuff. So it's been good. What can dad teach daughter from whether it's racing or baseball or business? What are some of the biggest things you've learned over the last 20, 25 years that you can teach her in her current position now in life? Ooh. Wow. That's heavy. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, Whoa. I guess the biggest thing is, is just give your all give 100 percent all the time and constantly open and learning i mean that's really the whole thing right i mean yeah. i think that if you get stuck in your ways or you're not you know willing to learn i think that's the biggest problem so you have to be able to do that and if you can do that i think you're going to be successful and, and you know we we've brought her up to be you know she's uh very she's very strong she believes yeah. in what she believes in she stands up for herself she's not afraid to I wonder where you know, she got that from <laughs> oh yeah, we know where that came from. Definitely not come from Michelle. She's too nice. <laughs> so, but no, she knows. She knows what she wants. You yeah. know, she's she can do her thing, and she's she's strong, and it's been good. So I think that's the biggest thing. And once again, you got to let them learn on their own, understand stuff on their own, and just kind of go from there. It's a badass. Look, I've known Statman for twenty five, twenty six years, and you're the only guy that made Statman cry. Oh after yes. You won that, yeah. After you won the five hundred, bro, ham. <laughs> I know. That was pretty cool, though, huh? Yes. Hey, anybody Another that'll bounce step. off the wall to go after a win can't be all bad. No, <laughs> not gonna give up that opportunity. You do a little opening, I'm going for it. Do you miss driving in uh, Indy cars? Uh, I don't. Not right now. I don't miss the driving the Indy cars. No, I liked Why? it. Like when there was more development, I liked it when it was different and you could, you know, do a lot more testing and driving. I mean, those guys just show up and race, and I. I mean, it is what it is, and it's, you know, just the evolution of where everything's at. But, you know, I'm definitely looking towards, you know, some of the sports car stuff and getting back into that and, and possibly doing that. So we'll just see. Yeah, we can't discount the fact that he's also a Daytona winner with Brumo. So, yeah, there is that as well. We keep going Indy, Indy, Indy. What about Daytona, Daytona, Daytona? That's pretty huge. Yeah, that was that was really big. And that was a really, you know, to, for Brumo's Porsche and, and a name mm-hmm. like that and for, you know, Mr. Snodgrass and, and his efforts, that was, a, that, was, that was a cool achievement with all those guys. And, you know, with Donahue and um, Antonio Garcia and, D- and Darren Law, and Darren, you know, lives here in town, and I've known him since I was really young. So it was, it was cool just to, to be able to do that and get that opportunity. And, and uh, I mean, a historic livered car, Porsche, Brumos, that was pretty cool. Well, buddy, we celebrated our 21st anniversary back in June, and – and here we are. Uh, the four of us are still kicking it, talking motorsports. That's pretty bonkers. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. And you and I are dads. Yeah, <laughs> that's the most awesome. Who would have thought that? <laughs> yeah, <Get> to girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, exactly. buddy. I don't know this guy. He, instead of Budweiser and beer, he's talking wine and and cheese and girls and soccer yep. and play dates and all that i don't play know dates. this guy anymore dude like i said we all got to change and evolve you got to be prepared you can't just be stuck in the rut Bye. all right there you go that sounds like your that sounds like your life too dude i know i change all the time gotta stay on top of it yep buddy rice here in the freak nation dude this is greatness, man. Thanks for yes. taking time out. Uh, don't be a stranger. You're just down the street 30, 45 minutes from us. All right? I know. I can't believe it took us this long even here. You should have done this a while ago. We're, we're all at fault for this one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, please. Well, so is our travel schedule. So, yeah. yeah we we got a little us. bit of a yeah. break. <laughs> please, uh, please tell Michelle hello from the Freak Nation, yes. buddy. We will definitely. Thanks for having me. Good seeing you guys.